Uh, welcome to the lecture on uh, Kitaev model, uh, which is a part of this course uh, called Topology and Condensed Matter Physics. Uh, so, we have been talking about uh, Kitaev model and um, uh, one of the reasons that um, after uh, you know talking about uh, the schur higer model, SSH model, uh, we have uh, started talking about the Kitaev model. Uh, is that uh, the SSH model, the topological consideration is fragile. What I mean by that is that if uh, one uh, introduces a mass term or a term which uh, you know goes in the diagonal elements that is uh, which makes dz equal to 0, uh, then uh, there will be no topological phase and uh, it will be a band insulator or an ordinary insulator. Um, so, uh, the topology in SSH model crucially depends on uh, the dz term to be 0 and because of which the chiral symmetry exists. Um, by the way, uh, this uh, diagonal term in the Hamiltonian, the uh, Dirac Hamiltonian which is uh, written in the form d dot sigma can also come from a next nearest neighbor hopping. Okay, um, that would induce uh, A to A hopping or a B to B hopping. Uh, in that case, also uh, the chiral symmetry would be gone, and uh, it'll be uh, SSH model would uh, you know boil down to a trivial insulator. Now this model, uh, Kitaev model, which uh, consists of spinless fermions um, and uh, P-wave superconductivity. Now you could ask this question: How? Uh, are these fermions spinless? I mean, they could be uh, spin polarized fermions having only one kind of spin such that the spin degrees of freedom uh, do not uh, appear in the problem, which can be done by uh, using a magnetic field. However, uh, that uh, would uh, lead to uh, further problems uh, and in fact, that is uh, uh, discussed in the context of Kitaev model in which uh, uh, one can actually talk about more familiar kind of pairing which is S wave superconductivity and uh, in presence of a magnetic field and spin orbit coupling etc. etc. Uh, let us not uh, go into that and let us only talk about this uh, P wave uh, superconductor which is shown as a green block uh, that is there below and then there is a wire which is that uh, uh, the blue rod uh, that you see and uh, these uh, red ones that um, uh, you know spiky ones at the edges are uh, something that we are going to discuss and it's called as a Majorana fermions. Okay? Now in this model the topological phase is much more robust and as long as uh, we have this superconductivity or the superconducting pairing, it, the particle hole symmetry protects the topological phase and it is not going to go away just the way we have uh, done it for uh, or have seen it for the SSH model. And that is the reason that we are uh, doing a second tight binding model in order to talk about the topological phase. Okay? It is just a schematic diagram that you see here. And um, so, uh, the superconductivity is induced in this blue rod or the Kitaev wire or the Kitaev chain by proximity effects. Okay? So, because it is in the proximity of a superconductor, the semiconducting wire or the chain or the tight binding chain, that is how the superconductivity is induced in that. Okay? And as I said, the, the particle hole symmetry uh, protects the topological uh, characteristic. Okay? This we have done it. Um, uh, in the last class, I still wanted to remind you of uh, the notations that are used. Uh, so, uh, we write down a two site Kitaev Hamiltonian. This is uh, site number 1. So, this is uh, the chemical potential of site number 1, chemical potential of site number 2. This is the kinetic energy of uh, which is because of the electron hopping from site 1 to uh, so rather site 2 to site 1 and then the Hermitian conjugate takes care of the other way hopping and uh, both of them will have to have the same amplitude in order for the, the Hamiltonian to be Hermitian. And there is a superconducting pairing term. Uh, we have said this earlier that uh, the operator corresponding to the pairing is this C1 uh, dagger, C2 dagger. Uh, plus a Hermitian conjugate and uh, uh, the amplitude of pairing, uh, the P wave pairing is uh, given by this delta. You see uh, spin nowhere in the problem and this is what we have said that it is a spin polarized problem. And uh, uh, this is the model consisting of a chemical potential here. 
the kinetic energy or the uh, energy due to hopping. So, this is the kinetic part of it and this is the superconducting or P wave superconductivity. So, P wave ok. Now, uh, you have to choose a suitable basis in order to write it in a matrix form and, and then you you know diagonalize the matrix and find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors and that is about it I mean and then use the eigenvectors uh, and probably the eigenvalues too in order to make sense out of the uh, problem in terms of its topological characteristic. So, we choose this as the basis it is a C1 dagger C1 and a C2 dagger C2. So, it is not that we choose all of them to be creation operator here and all of them to be annihilation operator here because the most uh, convenient basis is uh, the particle hole at site 1 and the particle hole at site 2 and just the conjugate of that. So, it is a C1 C1 dagger C2 C2 dagger and then you can get this Hamiltonian. So, the easiest way for you to is to uh, you know write this uh, the top line which I wrote and then uh, write down uh, this basis. So, you will have terms like this term minus mu is the C1 dagger C1 term as you see it is minus mu and the second term that is a C1 dagger C1 C1 term that is this term is 0 there is no term which is like C1 C1 and then there is a C2 dagger C1 which is minus T and so on. So, uh, you can uh, create this uh, 4 by 4 matrix and then uh, can solve it. So, uh, we decided to you know resort to a, a slightly different um, notation in which uh, we talk about uh, creation of a particle uh, at site 1 to be uh, a ket like this for the annihilation to be like this and uh, for uh, for the second site it is like this ok. So, these are written in uh, Brian ket notation uh, and in which we use this E and H E for electron and uh, H for hole. Uh, so, the creation operators are associated with particles or electrons and uh, the annihilation operators are associated with holes ok. Uh, in this notation, we can uh, go to this uh, n site. So, we wrote down the first the two site Hamiltonian uh, here and uh, which is the same Hamiltonian as you see here uh, written uh, in this matrix form. This is uh, written uh, in terms of this uh, E and H uh, the bras and the kets and um, uh, we can uh, generalize this to n sites here. So, this is for a n site Hamiltonian and it has uh, these uh, minus mu and so on and uh, and then there is a t term and then there is a delta term. You have to see it carefully that uh, uh, it is a C1 uh, dagger C2 and C2 dagger C3 all these terms are there and then you can uh, you know uh, combine these terms. So, this is the uh, of course, the diagonal term which uh, you know uh, is an on site term uh, at a site n and these are uh, connecting uh, the n plus 1 n to n plus 1 at site and uh, n to n plus 1 at site with an amplitude minus t plus delta and t minus delta ok. So, uh, this is uh, an exercise for you to write down the n site Kitaev model in this particular form and um, uh, once you do that one has to Fourier transform. Now, it became a, a not a 4 by 4 problem which you could probably solve analytically or by hand and now um, this uh, for the n site problem you definitely do have to go to the computer and solve it. But uh, if we do a Fourier transform that is if we write down the uh, Hamiltonian in the momentum space because uh, uh, the reason that we could do this is uh, that we have uh, a translational invariance of the system and uh, k is a good quantum number. So, we write down this c k and c k dagger by usual notations. Uh, of course, you do not see a 1 over 2 pi etcetera, but uh, uh, that is uh, you know it is not written here and uh, it is not uh, required in fact uh, you could write it like this. Uh, there is one very important identity that you need in order to write the uh, Hamiltonian in that massless Dirac form and uh, this is uh, that uh, important step which is uh, it is like an identity which is uh, it is a minus exponential minus i k c k dagger c minus k uh, dagger is equal to an exponential i k c k 
uh, dagger and a C uh, minus K uh, dagger and so on. Okay. So, the massless Dirac form is this. Okay. Uh, now, you see that again we can write it as a D dot sigma. Now, in the uh, ZY or YZ plane. Okay. So, your X component is 0. So, D vector is uh, contained in the y z plane. Uh, to remind you that in the SSH model it was in the x y plane and d z equal to 0 and uh, that is what was very important for that model to have topological character. However, here uh, the d x is equal to 0 and um, we have uh, d y and d z and it is written in terms of uh, uh, d dot sigma. Now, remember that uh, sigma here represents the particle hole degrees of freedom. And uh, in the SSH model, it was the uh, sublattice degrees of freedom. That is, uh, whether uh, you know we are talking about A sublattice or B sublattice. Here, of course, we are not talking about sublattices, but we are uh, introducing the particle hole degrees of freedom. Okay. So uh, the d vector is, of course, given by this uh, with you know a dy and dz here. This dy and dz and uh, one can actually solve this Hamiltonian uh, easily and find its eigenvalues and eigenvectors and the eigenvalues um, and the eigenvectors are plus and minus of this uh, where corresponding to the plus sign you have this eigenvector and corresponding to the minus sign. So, this plus sign and this correspond to the minus sign. Okay. So, uh, these are the preliminaries of the Kritayev model and are in exact parallel with uh, the ones that we have seen for the SSH model, excepting one very crucial point which I had uh, indicated to you. You have to use an identity in order to get the, uh, the Kritayev model in a closed form that is right uh, in the form of d dot sigma and that is what we have done. So, uh, there is nothing new so far excepting that uh, the SSH model uh, we had dz equal to 0, here we have dx equal to 0 and uh, the wave vector uh, or rather this uh, dy and dz which are both functions of k. Uh, so, we will vary k over the Brillouin zone and try to draw um, you know a curve, a uh, closed curve that uh, winds the origin if it does as a function of these uh, changing of mu t and delta then we call it a topological phase and if it does not we will call it a trivial phase just like what we have done. So, we uh, know the definition of the winding number and that is what has to be computed uh, here. Now, um, you can see it here that uh, the dz can be either greater than 0 or it could be uh, smaller than 0. Uh, depending on these conditions that is whether mu is greater than minus 2 t or mu is less than minus 2 t. Okay. So, dz will be greater than 0 for mu greater than minus 2 t and dz will be equal to 0 for mu less than minus 2 t. In fact, these are the topological the parameters that distinguish between the topological phase and the trivial phase. So, let us uh, explore the winding numbers in each of these cases and find out whether they uh, do really distinguish between uh, a normal insulator and a topological insulator. So, we have the same uh, formula for the winding number which call it, we call it as nu here uh, 1 over 2 pi and then there is a, a sum over the Brillouin zone and what I mean by Brillouin zone is that it goes from k goes from minus pi to plus pi and there is a mod of this ddk of hk and the hk is given by this. So, it is the same uh, you could uh, use the same expression that we have uh, discussed in the context of SSH model. Uh, however, this one is also equivalent to that. So, h of k is equal to uh, tan inverse of dz by dy and uh, which uh, is equal to tan inverse of mu plus 2 t cos k to delta sin k. Uh, we will uh, tell you about this you know this 2 t cos k is nothing but the epsilon k which is equal to a minus 2 t cos k a. Uh, we have taken a equal to 1. So, epsilon k is minus 2 t cos k that is the band energies that is the tight binding energies of the wire. Uh, mu is of course, the chemical potential and delta is the, the superconducting uh, pairing amplitude. 
uh, superconducting pairing uh, amplitude is usually or rather the gap function is usually a complex number having a form uh, delta equal to uh, you know delta exponential i phi where phi is the uh, related to the phase of the wave function that is the phase of the wave function and uh, however here delta is just a real parameter which we have uh, considered here. So, uh, if you uh, calculate this winding number by uh, all these quantities that you have now and then integrate it over minus pi to plus pi you get two different curves one for a mu greater than minus 2 t that is what exactly was said here that mu greater than minus 2 t and uh, uh, the trivial phase is that there is no winding it is just simply a line and not a closed curve in the dy dz plane. Okay. So, um, uh, these plots are prepared for some specific values of uh, mu t and delta you see mu is equal to 0. So, here t equal to delta equal to 1 means that mu is uh, greater than minus 2 t minus 2 t is minus 2. So, 0 is greater than minus 2 which is correct. So, this is the topological phase and uh, the trivial phase which you see on the right is uh, mu equal to 1 and uh, we have put t equal to delta equal to 0. Of course, any other um, values or for the for these parameters are fine I mean in the sense that uh, we do not have to stick to these values, but these values are such that they correspond to the topological phase where mu is greater than minus 2 t and uh, for the other case mu is uh, less than minus 2 t. Okay. So, these are the uh, topological and the trivial phases of the problem. All right. So, let us um, explore uh, the parameter space a little bit and try to understand that uh, what are these different parameter values and corresponding to that the band structures etcetera. So, we have taken a number of them I mean 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 of them where we have taken various values of uh, mu t and delta. So, this corresponds to of course, the, uh, the topological phase that is familiar to us. Um, and uh, this of course, corresponds to the trivial phase that is again familiar to us for which the windings are shown in the dy dz plane. Uh, these are some values in middle or in between them and um, you will see that uh, you know there are these gap closing transitions that are occurring and uh, let us call this as a 1 case 1 and this as case 8 because there are 8 cases and uh, uh, whenever this condition mu greater than minus 2 t is satisfied uh, one has a topological phase uh, else we have a trivial phase. So, these are these uh, 8 uh, things that are 8 plots band structure plots that are shown. So, this corresponds to 1 and this corresponds to 8 and uh, all the all of them this 2, 3 etcetera they are all uh, you know shown here. And uh, you see that there are these gap closing uh, points here, here and so on. So, these are the uh, you know the points which uh, demarcates are uh, trivial to a topological phase. Okay. So, that the system undergoes a gap closing transition. Uh, this gap closing transition has been uh, told a number of times earlier. In fact, if a system is going from one topological phase to another topological phase or a topological phase to a trivial phase then it uh, goes through a gap closing uh, point or it goes through a critical phase where uh, the, uh, the uh, winding of the d vectors uh, it does not wind, but it just touches the exceptional point or the singularity point. Okay. So, these are band structure which you can easily calculate by uh, changing varying k from minus pi to plus pi. So, that is a k this is a k. So, k is written here of course, for each of them k is from minus pi to plus pi and this is how we uh, get uh, these uh, uh, various topological and uh, trivial phases. Okay. So, uh, in principle you know uh, the uh, discussion of the Kitaev model should have ended here saying that well there are realization of uh, uh, trivial insulator and topological insulator depending on the winding of this uh, the d vectors in the dy dz plane here dx is identically equal to 0 and uh, uh, 
uh, well I mean even if you introduce a dx here as long as the particle hole symmetries are maintained uh, what I mean by particle hole symmetries as long as the superconductivity is not destroyed uh, the superconductivity is intact and the Hamiltonian can be written in the form that we have written it in uh, we still have uh, all these uh, things to um, you know all these discussions that we have made so far uh, they are valid. Now um, additional interest was uh, you know uh, put into this problem of um, this uh, Kitaev wire or Kitaev chain with P wave superconducting correlations uh, by uh, due to I would not say by because by uh, is uh, it has been you know introduced in this context uh, uh, later 2012 we will uh, discuss some uh, experiments on that uh, by uh, Ettore Majorana, uh, this J is silent, and his name is Ettore uh, Majorana, who discovered it in this uh, Majorana fermions in the context of, uh, and he said that they are relevant to neutrinos. Uh, so, uh, this was done in uh, 1938. So, uh, he was probably born in uh, 1906, uh, but no records are found uh, after this proposal of this Majorana. Uh, fermion. So, we do not know much about him uh, after that. Uh, so, what it did was that under certain conditions he solved um, a Dirac equation and he got uh, real solutions for this Dirac equations and these uh, real solutions have very uh, strange features. Uh, what I mean by very strange features uh, is that um, they correspond to quasi particles. Uh, which are we call them as Majorana fermions because uh, it is named after Majorana. So, uh, uh, they have this property that they are uh, same as uh, that is their dagger or their complex conjugate. Okay? So, it is like saying that the particles are same as their holes. So, uh, you want to create a particle or you want to create a hole it really does not matter I mean they are they are the same thing. So, uh, we are just talking about two different Majorana fermions um, and we will come uh, ju just in a while that why we are talking about two of them. So, each one of them have property gamma 1 equal to gamma 1 dagger and gamma 2 equal to gamma 2 dagger. So, uh, these gamma 1s correspond to Majorana fermions just like uh, the C corresponds to usual fermions that you have used in order to write down the these um, you know Hamiltonian. So, here you see that uh, here you have taken the C's to be fermionic operators the electrons and these are used in order to write down these uh, you know the Hamiltonian uh, they have uh, we know that they have uh, anti commutation relations uh, they obey Pauli exclusion principle and so on so forth. Okay? And uh, so here we are finding a very different kind of particles which actually are their own conjugates. I am repeating this statement, but this is something very strange and uh, that means that uh, you can express this Majoranas at any given site uh, by a combination of two Majorana fermions. So, a C i and a C i dagger it can be written as a half of gamma 1 i minus i gamma 2 i. Now, this i is equal to root over minus 1 and this i is the site index. So, please uh, make a distinction between the two. If you want, you can write it as C j equal to half of uh, gamma 1 gamma 1 j uh, minus i uh, gamma 2 j and so on and so forth. Okay? And similarly, uh, the uh, creation operator comes with a positive sign. Now, um, that is uh, like saying that each usual fermion operator is expressed in terms of two Majorana operators. Okay? And these two Majorana operators gamma 1 and gamma 2 actually denote a one fermion. So, these gamma 1 and gamma 2 are always together, they cannot be separated. You cannot separate a Majorana fermion one uh, I mean this gamma 1 from gamma 2. Okay? So, each fermion is composed of two Majoranas. And um, you can write down these uh, anti commutation relations, and where do they come from? You can use these relations such as C i, uh, C i uh, dagger, this is equal to 1, and C i, C i, or 
C I dagger C I dagger I dagger comma this is equal to 0 ok. So, if you put all these uh, gamma 1s etc there gamma 1 and gamma 2 there and then you get a gamma 1 gamma 2 anti commutation relation is equal to 0 same with gamma 1 dagger gamma 2 dagger just like here uh, you have uh, these uh, uh, C i and C i and C i dagger and C i dagger both these anti commutation give rise to 0 and uh, on top of that this gamma 1 square is equal to gamma 2 square is equal to 1. Uh, it is very uh, strange that because uh, a particle is its own conjugate. So, instead of uh, you know saying them they are filled or empty that we use usually for a usual fermion operators that these we use as the a complete set of basis sets for uh, usual fermions that either it is occupied or it is not occupied you can never make that comment for the Majorana fermion. So, it is never filled or never empty ok. So, they are uh, really distinct from uh, usual fermions. So, people uh, wanted to see in uh, condensed matter physics uh, and uh, that uh, whether Majorana fermions exist. I uh, just made a passing remark that uh, uh, these uh, Majorana actually thought that this is relevant to neutrinos and uh, then it was never seen in, uh, in the context of neutrinos. So, people have wanted to see whether in condensed matter systems it can be there and it was in a science article uh, in 2012, April 2012, the cover was this and then uh, the front uh, page uh, had a, a saying that uh, Majoranas arrive uh, and it says that when a negatively charged electron meets a positron it is positively charged antiparticle they annihilate each other in a flash of gamma rays. A Majorana fermion on the other hand is a neutral particle which is its own antiparticle this is what we have said. Uh, no sightings of Majorana have been reported in the elementary particle this is what I just said that in the uh, elementary particle world there was no evidence of Majorana fermion being detected. But recently uh, they have proposed to exist in solid state system and suggested to be of interest in quantum computing platform. I will make a passing mention of how it is uh, interesting to the quantum uh, computing platform which is uh, you know the call of the hour now. A lot of um, effort has been put in uh, quantum computation, quantum information, quantum technologies, quantum sensing uh, and various other things ok. So, it was by Maurik et al in um, April 2012 edition of the science article. They have said that uh, they set up a semiconductor nanowire and they did a tunneling experiment. Uh, so, by putting a normal and a superconducting electrode that revealed evidence of Majorana fermions and uh, this was uh, the experimental setup. So, you see that there is a normal metal and then there is a superconductor that are there and they are uh, being a normal metal is uh, put in a positive bias and uh, uh, so this is uh, really equivalent to like a, a schematic plot like this where the electron comes from this side and a, the green patch or the green sort of you know shaded region that you see is the barrier ok. And um, on the right you have a superconductor just like a normal and a superconductor we have a normal and a superconductor here and the superconductor is because there is a 2 delta gap with respect to the Fermi level of the metal. And um, uh, these 2 stars are basically the you know the Majoranas that are seen here. So, these are like stars here and so on. Uh, so, uh, the experiment was simply to uh, look at the differential conductance. What is differential conductance? That is d i d v ok. So, you see d i d v in unit of 2 e square by h and what you see is that um, you see it at 0 uh, magnetic field and you see it at something like 490 milli tesla magnetic field and you see that the 0 bias peak remains where it is ok. So, which means as if the 0 bias peak is like uh, you know spinless particle where the Zeeman energy does not uh, uh, cause anything or rather it does not uh, you know disturb it. Uh, so, this is the evidence that these uh, 
uh, even if you you know introduce the magnetic field we of course haven't talked about magnetic field in our uh, discussion of the Kitayev chain but as I said that there is a parallel uh, description that exists uh, where you can actually do a uh, instead of a P wave superconductor which is very very rare in uh, nature probably non-existent to be uh, you know to, uh, for all practical purposes but um, uh, probably there as well I uh, do not want to commit on that but S wave superconductivity is definitely there I mean aluminium, mercury, niobium etc all are S wave superconductors. So, if you take a S wave superconductor and want to do the same experiment and that is what these people did uh, Mori et al in the science 2012. Uh, paper in which they have uh, taken uh, these uh, uh, I think indium antimonite kind of thing where uh, there are spin orbit coupling also there and uh, they put it in a magnetic field and this magnetic field uh, sort of the zero bias peak continues to exist uh, this peak that you see here. Uh, and this is an evidence. The, so, the Majoranas are, are there at zero bias or zero energy and these Majoranas do not go away. Uh, they are like spinless particles and uh, they are completely uh, immune to the magnetic field. Uh, we will tell you uh, that why do we think that these are uh, evidence of Majorana. Uh, that is because that they occur at zero energy. In fact, it is in the same spirit if you remember the SSH chain that we have talked about in the topological regime we have two atoms at the end of the chain to be uh, completely decoupled which means that uh, whether they are there or whether they are not there it really does not uh, make any difference to the energy of the system which means they are at zero energy. If you introduce them they are at zero energy. These Majoranas are at zero energy as well and they are uh, completely you know uh, like a compound object and you cannot separate the Majoranas. All right. So, if you want to understand a little more about how the Majoranas play an important role in this uh, Kitayev model. Uh, once again I just want to remind you that uh, you know we, we could have uh, wrapped up the discussion of Kitayev model by just saying that these this is the topological phase, this is the trivial phase and um, we are pretty happy with this Kitayev uh, chain for the reason that uh, as long as the superconductivity exists uh, the particle hole symmetry would uh, make the topological state robust and uh, will also the system will definitely show a transition from a, a topological to the trivial uh, if you somehow can tune the chemical potential from being greater than minus 2 t to less than minus 2 t. So, there a transition will occur from uh, topological to trivial and so on, but um, uh, these uh, additional discussion uh, with respect to Majorana is a very important as I said uh, from the perspective of uh, quantum computation and using them as qubits because they are correlated over large distances. So, um, uh, I gave you the relationship between uh, an electron and and uh, Majorana. So, uh, the C i and C i dagger are expressed in terms of the Majoranas and uh, one can write down uh, the Majorana Hamiltonian uh, I mean basically the Kitayev Hamiltonian in terms of the Majoranas like this ok. Um, you have to write down it in terms of C and C dagger and then convert the C and C daggers to gamma 1 and gamma 2 and then write it here uh, I was more careful in writing in terms of J. So, uh, th these j denotes the site indices and mu is of course, the chemical potential delta is the superconducting pairing and t is the, the real space hopping amplitude ok. Now, this one would correspond to a, a topological phase that is if mu is greater than minus 2 t you have a Hamiltonian which looks like that and will uh, the Hamiltonian for the trivial one which will look like this ok. So, you have a gamma 2 j and a gamma 1 j plus 1 whereas, a gamma 1 j and a gamma 2 j and they come with different coefficients. So, these this is the Hamiltonian corresponding to the topological uh, limit and this is the Hamiltonian that corresponds to the trivial limit all right. So, uh, these are the Kitayev chain in terms of the Majorana and now you see that the trivial 
would correspond to this gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 4, etc. I have just taken a 4 side chain and 4 side means there are 4 fermion operators which are like C1, C2, C3, C4 or C1 dagger, C2 dagger, C3 dagger and C4 dagger. But there are 8 Majoranas because each uh, fermion or each electron would correspond to 2 Majoranas. So, these are these gamma 1, gamma 2, etc. for these n equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, in the trivial limit, which means that mu is less than minus 2t, this is what we have been saying. It will look like that all the Majoranas were are paired up uh, at their sides. Now, for the other case, when it is equal to minus 2t, you have uh, the two Majoranas here. Let me use a color. These two Majoranas here they uh, correspond to zero energy because they are you know they are completely separated from the chain. So, whether they are there or they are not there it does not matter to the energy and they correspond to zero energy. And uh, so, the zero energy is a two fold degenerate line uh, which correspond to these uh, two Majoranas in the system. Okay. And uh, because uh, we have just taken as uh, four site system, we could in principle take it as 1000 sites or uh, 10,000 or uh, 1 million sites, you will have them as uh, uh, you know uh, correlated, but they are at great distances. So, that is how they could be used as uh, you know qubits and would aid in the quantum computation of some kind. All right. So, uh, these are uh, the discussion about the Majorana physics that is intimately related to the Kitaev chain that we have talked about and uh, the how the trivial and the topological states of the system are uh, related to these uh, two Majoranas being uh, there at zero energy and uh, th there is no free Majorana or there is no zero energy mode of the system. So, uh, not having zero energy mode means that uh, the, the here on the top panel that you see for corresponding to the trivial phase, the uh, bulk and the boundary, uh, they, there is no difference between them. And here you see the bulk and the boundary in the lower panel, there is a difference because uh, there are two uh, Majoranas that are completely free corresponding to the two edges of the chain, the Kitaev chain and uh, that is why there is a bulk boundary correspondence and uh, it corresponds to the, uh, the lower panel corresponds to the topological limit. So, uh, to uh, finally you know wind up the discussion, let us uh, talk about the symmetries of the Kitaev chain. Okay. So, I write down the Hamiltonian once again. So, this is minus mu and then there is a ni i from 1 to L and minus well I can write it as uh, inside the bracket. So, this is i equal to again 1 to L you write i or j it does not matter. So, this is like C i dagger C i plus 1 plus delta C i C i plus 1 or you can write it as dagger dagger this is what we have written earlier and plus a Hermitian conjugate. Okay? So, that is your uh, Hamiltonian uh, for the n side chain and um, we have given a prescription of uh, how to write it in the k space. So, if you write it in the k space then it resembles a form which is h equal to uh, k and a phi k dagger uh, h of k and we write this as a BDG uh, because this is something that you will be seeing if you look at literature and the BDG means uh, Bogolyubov of Dijen uh, which is uh, written in the particle hole basis. So, Bogolyubov of Dijen, Dijen's. So, this is called BDG. So, you write down this uh, HK of BDG there and then phi of K where phi K is the basis which uh, denotes that uh, it is the dagger of that is equal to CK dagger C of minus K. Okay. So, HK 
uh, and then the BDG is basically the same Hamiltonian that we had written down earlier. Now, I am just writing it in terms of the basis. Uh, so, this is equal to uh, epsilon k delta k star and we write it with a notation and just explain the notation and then delta k star and uh, there is a minus epsilon k. Okay? So, that is the Hamiltonian uh, and this Hamiltonian uh, your epsilon k equal to minus 2 t cosine k a, uh, but you can write that uh, put that a equal to 1. So, uh, you have equal to minus 2 t cosine k and uh, delta k tilde is equal to uh, minus 2 i uh, delta sin k a or which is nothing but minus 2 i delta sin k. Okay? So, that is your delta k, this is often called as the P wave, uh, be careful in there is a i here. Okay? Now, this is called as a P wave pairing amplitude. And uh, of course, this is a tight binding energy in 1D. of the chain energy of the chain okay so that's the tight binding energy uh, there and so on so usually as i said that this delta is uh, usually a complex quantity um, written with uh, amplitude and a phase but here of course we have taken this to be a real parameter of here okay so you can write down the h of k BDG, BDG as I said stands for Bogolyubov of Dijen. This is equal to that Dirac form which is D of K and uh, you can write a BDG or you do not need to write a BDG. You can write it a D dot sigma where a D uh, of K is uh, nothing but a 0 minus 2 delta sin K uh, minus mu minus 2 T cosine K. Okay? So, that is your D and um, the E uh, the energy uh, E plus minus uh, K for this Hamiltonian if you solve this Hamiltonian it is plus minus root over epsilon K square plus a delta K tilde square mod square of that. Okay? So, that is the energy and um, um, so, d x equal to 0. So, there is a, a gap for all values of k and so on. So, uh, we are uh, talking about the symmetry and the symmetry the most important symmetry that protects the topological phase. And uh, this uh, symmetry uh, uh, basically the the parent symmetry is the particle hole symmetry. Okay, so, uh, if that is the case and we have been writing a particle hole symmetry with the PHS and then you have a H star K uh, well, I mean whether you want to write the star here or you want to write a BDG here and then a star there. Okay. So, this is the thing and then PHS, PHS uh, dagger this is equal to minus H uh, minus K uh, BDG. So, this is the invariance of the Hamiltonian. If the Hamiltonian obeys this relation, uh, then uh, of course, it is invariant. Uh, so, uh, here uh, this is uh, the PHS is uh, is equal to uh, sigma x which is nothing but it is a 0 1 1 0. Now, each of these uh, do not think that it is just a 2 by 2 matrix. 
this uh, is actually a, each of the element is an n by n block and uh, so sigma x uh, it has a form which is 0 1 1 0 so one can check that uh, sigma x h of k uh, b d g uh, and star uh, sigma x because sigma x dagger is equal to sigma x and this is equal to its minus h b d g uh, b d g minus k ok. So, this you have to check and if you get this then it is um, invariant and you should get this ok because that is the parent symmetry of the Hamiltonian ok. And uh, uh, so, if this is true then you should also get a sigma x d x k uh, we write it here. So, d x k sigma x is equal to minus d x minus k uh, sigma y dy uh, k sigma I mean not sigma y sigma x sigma x is equal to minus dy of minus k and sigma x dz of k uh, sigma x is equal to dz of minus k ok. So, this is the symmetry properties uh, I mean this denotes the symmetry properties of this Hamiltonian of the Kitaev Hamiltonian and as I said because of this particle hole symmetry even if you put an on site term uh, on site potential at each site um, or if you you know introduce some other even if you introduce a dx it really does not uh, matter it will still have uh, the, the topological phases and the trivial phases uh, etcetera excepting the fact that uh, visualization of the winding uh, would be a problem if all dx dy dz uh, exist um, in which case also there are you know remedies that allow us to uh, transform the Hamiltonian uh, such that it loses one of the key uh, x or y or z components and uh, then the visualization becomes you know simple. So, to sum up things Kitaev model with P wave superconducting correlations is an important model uh, tight binding model uh, which uh, shows uh, topological behavior uh, in certain region of the parameter space. Uh, it is just like um, our uh, SSH model uh, however, uh, the topology is much more robust here and it is protected uh, by the particle hole symmetry which is inherent to this problem because of uh, the superconducting correlations the particle hole symmetry is intact and uh, we show the uh, invariance of the Hamiltonian uh, with particle hole symmetry uh, via this sigma x operator it being acting on this h of k b d g uh, it transforms according to this uh, formula. And uh, uh, because of that each of the dx dy and dz would transform accordingly ok. So, uh, this is how we uh, wrap up the discussion on 1D tight binding models which are uh, paradigmatic models for showing um, the topological considerations and um, we will now move on to uh, something else which also has a, a rather a very close connections with uh, topology ok. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.